Heartburn afflicts nearly two-thirds of U.S. adults at some point in their lives and accounts for four to five million physician office visits every year. In addition, it is the leading contributing factor to the exponential rise in esophageal cancer cases seen in the last 20 years. From the time Dr. Barrett coined the term reflux esophagitis in the 1950s, surgeons have been determined to surgically intervene. What started as a debate over chloroplasty and fundoplication has evolved into a complex surgical subspecialty in which chloral closure and fundoplication both find critical roles. My name is Dr. Caitlin Houghton. I am faculty at the University of Southern California in the Upper GI and General Surgery Division. Today, I will discuss best practices for anti-reflux surgery and compare surgical options for LES augmentation. Many studies in the scientific literature show the curl diaphragm in GERD patients is inherently abnormal. Pandolfino and colleagues found that the only independent predictor of GERD on high-resolution manometry was reduced EGJ pressure augmentation, which is an ind indicator of impaired curl diaphragm functional integrity. Interestingly, this value even predicted GERD more reliably than the presence of a hiatal hernia. Salza and colleagues compared high-resolution manometry and EUS studies of patients with esophagitis to similar studies in a normal control group. How they got people to volunteer for manometry is beyond me, but he did, and the results showed that even in GERD patients who didn't have a hiatal hernia, the right crus was thinner on EUS and statistical differences in diaphragm functionality was seen on high-resolution manometry, consistent with Pandolfino's findings that the curl diaphragm is impaired in GERD patients. Therefore, in any patient receiving, receiving surgical intervention for GERD, even when hernia is not seen, a full mediastinal dissection with curl closure is recommended. The esophagus should be circumferentially mobilized until two to three centimeters of intra-abdominal length is achieved. Then, the crus is closed posteriorly until the curl diaphragm approximates but does not constrict the distal esophagus. Robotically, this is often achieved using a running technique with a VLOC suture. Mesh should be considered to reinforce the curl repair. In this case, Phasix ST mesh is placed in the posterior position. Although long-term outcomes don't show reduction of recurrences, mesh does reduce the chances of recurrence in the first six months to one year. In my opinion, this warrants its use. Restoration of the reflux barrier is not complete until both chloroplasty and LES augmentation is achieved. Sophisticated studies using high-resolution manometry, such as this one by Louis and colleagues, published in the Journal of Gastrointestinal Surgery in 2013, demonstrates the independent contributions chloroplasty and fundoplication makes to the reflux barrier, highlighting the importance of completing both steps during surgical intervention. In this study, high-resolution manometry was used after three critical steps intraoperatively to illustrate how the LES changes after hiatal dissection, curl closure, and fundoplication. Let me draw your attention to the green pressure band at the bottom of the manometry tracing. This correlates to LES. After complete hiatal dissection, high-resolution manometry looks like this with a low pressure band seen. After chloroplasty, the pressure at the LES increases. Conversely, after fundoplication, the pressure is relatively constant, but the length of the LES increases. This study classifies the contribution curl closure and fundoplication independently make to the reflux barrier. Many techniques exist for LES augmentation with varying success. For the purpose of today's talk, I will focus on surgical approaches, which include Nissen, Toupe, and Lynx. 
Historically, the Nissan fund application has been the gold standard by which every other fund application is compared. Surgeons often favor the Nissan due to the perception that it provides the best reflux control. The robotic platform is an excellent tool for creating a sturdy Nissan fund application. It starts with the division of the short gastric vessels. Although often regarded as a simple step, division of the short gastric vessels must be done precisely to reduce bleeding complications, especially when taking the short splenic pole vessels. Having the energy source on a wristed instrument coupled with high definition 3D visualization provides the control required to minimize bleeding risk. A large bore bougie is then placed, which has been shown to help reduce postoperative dysphagia. The shoe shine maneuver is performed to ensure the wrap is straight and enough fundus is used to create a floppy, tension free fund application. The Nissen can then be sutured into place with ease. Three sutures are placed to secure the gastric fundus around the esophagus. The middle suture catches the esophageal wall to prevent slippage. Minimizing the length of the Nissen to two centimeters as recommended by Dr. Tom Demeester in his 1986 study is thought to provide the optimal length for reflux control while minimizing post-operative side effects. In addition, Tile Pro or picture-in-picture -picture mode is a nice adjunct which allows the surgeon to visualize the endoscopic and console views simultaneously. In this mode, the integrity of the wrap is checked prior to undocking. The wrap should have a narrow upper lip with a stacked coins appearance. In studies comparing Nissen to Toupee, the side effect profile of the Toupee fund application is found to be better than that of the Nissen. This leads to the obvious question, does the Nissen fund application's ability to control reflux better justify the acceptance of increased risk of side effects? The most recent SAGES guidelines seem to suggest no, with multiple randomized control studies showing equal pH normalization up to five years. A recent study published in JAMA by Thorell and colleagues also supports the use of a well-constructed toupee fund application. This blinded, randomized control study compares outcomes between Nissen and toupee with over 200 patients in each group. Objective pH studies showed normalization in both groups, which was sustained at one and three years. Consistent with previous studies, dysphagia rates were higher in the Nissen group. Existing literature challenges the long-standing perception that Nissen provides better reflux control and therefore side effects can be accepted. It suggests a well-constructed 270-degree toupee fund application should be considered a more sustainable option. Robotic toupee fund application starts similarly to a Nissen fund application. The fundus is passed through the posterior window by grasping the short gastric vessels. A shoe shine maneuver is then performed to ensure a straight wrap. Once the 56 French bougie is in place, the fundus is sewn to the esophagus and anchored to the right cruise. This step is aided by the wristed needle driver, which makes sewing to the curled diaphragm simpler. Two additional sutures are then placed to build the right side of the toupee. The goal length of the fund application is three centimeters. Punzias and colleagues showed that a three centimeter toupee fund application leads to less treatment failures than a shorter 1.5 centimeter wrap. The left side is then built in a symmetrical fashion, tacking the upper stitch to the left cruise. Care is taken not to catch the anterior vagus nerve while suturing. Endoscopy then can be performed in tile pro mode to check the integrity of the wrap. The wrap should show a straight fundic folds with omega shaped lip. The Lynx is an alternative to traditional fund application. It is a magnetic ring designed for placement around the distal esophagus, aiding in LES augmentation. 
It is touted to give similar reflux control to the Nissen fund application with less side effects and fewer recurrences. Is this too good to be true? Or is this the innovation we have been waiting for? Early randomized control studies on Lynx showed 80 to 90% pH resolution at one year post-implantation, making Lynx the exciting new solution for reflux. The Lynx is placed by making a window between the esophagus and the posterior vagus nerve, approximately two centimeters above the angle of hiss. The pen rose is then used as a placeholder while the sizing device is introduced. The sizer is then sequentially tightened until the, it impinges the esophageal wall and eventually pops open. A lynx size three beads above pop is then introduced into the abdomen, placed through the posterior window and clasped closed. Pulling the strings in opposite directions ensures proper closure. End endoscopy shows the Z line well below the diaphragm pinch. On retroflexed view, there's a hill grade one valve that is tight around the scope. Of note, as the link scars in over time, the height of the valve increases. When compared head to head against Nissen fund application, Early meta-analyses found Lynx was just as good at controlling reflux at one year follow-up. In addition, Lynx was better in preserving the ability to belch and vomit. Overall gas bloat and post-operative dysphagia rates were similar in the two groups with a higher percentage of patients requiring dilation for their dysphagia in the Lynx group. Interestingly, studies of Lynx on patients with large hiatal hernias three to seven centimeters shows radiographic recurrence rates of 4.3% at 19 months. This is much lower than the early recurrence rates for Nissen, which are expected to be anywhere from nine to 20%. Circumferential scarring of the lynx is thought to contribute to the reduction seen. The data on lynx shows promise. Dysphagia rates are similar to Nissen, so in order to be perceived as a better option than traditional fund application, it'll have to maintain a safety profile and either show superior long-term reflux control proven with objective pH data or show decreased hernia recurrence rates that are sustained long-term. Until we have that data, a concrete recommendation for links over traditional fund application cannot be made. Since surgeons first described surgical intervention for reflux esophagitis in 1950, the challenges of maintaining long-term reflux control while reducing the side effect profile was recognized. Using scientific literature as a guide, we now understand that both chloroplasty and fundoplication contribute independently to the reflux barrier, and therefore both must be addressed in any anti-reflux procedure. Mesh can help reinforce the curl closure to reduce recurrences in the early postoperative period. Nissen, Toupee, and Lynx all provide excellent reflux control. Recent randomized control studies have disputed the perception that Nissen provides superior reflux control, persuading many surgeons towards Toupee fund application. Lynx may contribute to decreases in hernia recurrences. However, additional data is required to make a concrete recommendation for its use over traditional fund application. Thank you for joining me today to learn about surgical options for the treatment of GERD. I'm Dr. Caitlin Houghton.